Welcome to Swanson Reed's presentation on a recent R&D decision handed down by the Administrative Appeals Tribunal of Australia, or the AAT, in April 2023. The case, Lakes Oil NL and the Industry of Innovation and Science Australia, or ISA, involved an R&D entity attempting to claim activities related to hydraulic fracturing technology for Gippsland tight gas in the 2014 and 2015 financial years. This presentation has been based on the AAT case description, which can be found on the AAT's website. Swanson Reed has also provided a written summation on the matter, available on our website. The links can be found in the video description. We'll start with some background information, then the case itself, and then the significance of this ruling and key learnings from it. The applicant, Lakes Oil NL, known now as Lakes Blue Energy NL, is the oldest oil company in Australia and contends that they have engaged in eligible research and development activities as defined by the Industry Research and Development Act 1986 since 2006. In the time period under review, Lakes Oil was primarily involved in hydrocarbon exploration and investment in the Gippsland and Ottawa Basin areas in Victoria. The company had been granted petroleum exploration and retention licenses for oil and gas in adjacent gas fields known as Wombat and Trifon, and had constructed a number of gas wells in those fields. In the 2014 and 15 financial years, Lakes Oil registered activities under the R&D tax incentive related to the development of new technologies and techniques adapted to the unique geological features of the Gippsland region for extracting and achieving economic flows of the identified land access gas and oil resources. In 2016, ISA informed Lakes Oil it was conducting a review of the claimed activities for the relevant years to ensure these activities complied with the R&D Act. ISA requested particulars of the experiments undertaken and the hypothesis being tested. The project specifically under scrutiny is entitled Project 1, LAC 2006, Hydraulic Fracturing Technology for Gippsland, Gippsland Tight Gas. Core R&D activities included fracturing beyond 100 metres, prototype test preparation and trials, and multi-factor analysis. Representatives of ISA met with Lakes Oil and considered the further information provided. Following the conclusion of its review, ISA contended that A. The activities undertaken were not experimental activities. B. Almost all the activities fall within an exclusion, namely the exclusion for exploring, prospecting or drilling stated in section 355.252. And C, there is insufficient evidence some of the claimed activities and the expenditure on those activities took place either within a registration year or at all. A certificate of finding was provided to Lakes Oil on the 28th of February, 2017 noting the outcome of the review. Lakes Oil requested an internal review of the S27J decision on the 22nd of March 2017. And on the 18th of April 2018, ISA confirmed the S27J decision of the R&D Act that none of the activities claimed by Lakes Oil in the relevant years satisfied the definition of R&D activities. On the 11th of May 2018, Lakes Oil applied to the AAT for a review of the internal review decision. Throughout the AAT case, Lakes Oil relied on the following evidence. Witness statements of Timothy O'Brien, who holds a Master of Science majoring in Geology and Geophysics and is the sole full-time employee of Lakes Oil, and expert re reports of Professor Raymond Johnson, who holds numerous related degrees, including a PhD in Mining Engineering, and occupies a position as a Professor of Well Engineering and Production Technology at the School of Chemical Engineering, University of Queensland. ISA relied on expert reports provided by Professor Bedrio Vetsky, who holds the following qualifications. Doctor of Science in Reservoir Engineering, PhD in Fluid Mechanics, and a Master of Science in Applied Mathematics. Lakes Oil argued the purpose of the activities subject to review in these proceedings was not to identify additional gas and oil resources or to determine the location of already identified resources as had been contended by ISA. 
Rather, Lake's oil's intention was to de develop strategies to identify sweet spots. As part of this process, Lake's oil arranged for GCA to reprocess 3D electroseismic data prepared in 2008 with new methods. They engaged Professor Bruce Moore to perform low altitude airborne multispectral image data acquisition to identify fracture sets that might enhance the success of any experimental locations within the wombat field based on fluid leakages. And they engaged Schlumberger to evaluate the stress modeling done previously by stimulation Petrophysics Consulting LLC. Following the ban placed on fracking by the Victorian government, Lake Soil researched a number of technologies that might be employable to achieve a lateral well in the desired section of the Strzelecki Formation, which specifically focused on drilling a well that had the ability to deploy hydraulic fracturing experiments at a later time. Mr. O'Brien says the issues to be solved through the experimental activities were gas ratios and fluids, fluid type and viscosity variations, pump rate variations, fluid volume variations, and propent size and concentration. During the case, it was noted that prospecting, exploring, or drilling for minerals or petroleum for the purposes of one or more of discovering deposits, determining more precisely the location of deposits, and slash or determining the size or quality of deposits is expressly excluded from the definition of core activities. Despite the clarification provided by Mr. O'Brien regarding the unknowns sought to be resolved through the undertaking of the reported experimental activities, ISA held that the activities under consideration in this case were directly associated with prospecting, exploring or drilling to better determine the precise location of or size or quality of gas reservoirs, so the exclusion applies. Further, ISA contends Lake's oil search for sweet spots was an attempt to look more closely, scrutinise or examine the geological conditions to determine the quality of the reservoir. That is, the high quality locations need to be found that will enable the applicant to achieve better production, which thereby falls squarely within the words of the exception. ISA pointed out, the Aquatronic Survey proposal states the survey will hopefully help identify gas slash oil accumulations as compared to water accumulations or non-saturated intervals. And two separate reports produced by the applicant in the 2014 financial year state the electroseismic survey can insist in identifying zones where ga gas slash oil are located as compared to water accumulations or non-saturated intervals. And the electroseismic survey report states an objective of the th survey was to define any oil reserve formations under the site. This evidence suggests a key purpose of all those activities, even if it was not the only purpose, was to determine more precisely the location of deposits within the meaning of section 355-252B of the ITTA and determine the size or quality of deposits within the meaning of section 355-22-2B3. Thus, whilst it is true that the reservoir itself had been located, it is not clear whether the extent and best locations of the deposit contained within the reservoir had been located and identified. The reports obtained by Lakes Oil all refers to estimates of volume. As such, the activities engaged in are more akin to opportunity identification than research. Ultimately, the AAT came to the conclusion that the claim activities fall within the scope of the exclusion provision it effectively disposes of the application, reaffirming the stances of IISA. For the sake of completeness, the AAT also made findings in relation to other issues within the application. This included determining whether or not the claimed activities were eligible core or supporting R&D activities by establishing if they contain a hypothesis with a clear scientific basis. The AAT concluded that there is no hypothesis found in the material. What is stated are aims and objectives. There was no evidence of any scientific basis behind the hypothesis. Rather, Lake Soil knew the best return on investment would occur if they could frack a half length of 100 metres. That is not a hypothesis, 
rather a commercial aim or objective, which does not satisfy the legislative requirements. Further, activities undertaken by lakes oil regarding hydraulic fracking were not satisfactorily based on principles of science as required by Section 355-251A of the Income Tax Assessment Act, and there was very little in the way of internal documentation prepared by Lakes Oil at all regarding any of the claimed activities. The AAT stated, the absence of that documentation suggests the requirements of the Act have not been satisfied. Notably, as there are no core activities, there could not have been any related supporting activities. In an update to the ASX in response to the decision, the company has noted, on the 14th of April 2023, the Administrative Appeals Tribunal handed down its decision in relation to the company's application review of Innovation Science Australia's rejection of the company's 2014 and 2015 financial year research and development tax incentive claims. The tribunal's decision was unfavourable for the company, with the tribunal finding that the company's activities did not qualify for the research and development rebates. The company has elected not to appeal the tribunal's decision. The company is repaying the grant originally received in respect of its 2014 and 15 activities, including general interest ch charges to the date and shortfall penalty assessment at the rate of $20,000 per month. This case serves as a reminder of several points. Firstly, the importance of documenting and assessing activities in accordance with program regula regulator guidance so as to minimise the likelihood of ending up in a lengthy and costly dispute with the regulators. The Oz Industry Guide to Interpretation documents include guidance on how the regulators will apply the exclusion provisions in Section 355.252. Secondly, a hypothesis must have a scientific basis, and identifying the aim of the project is not the same thing as testing a hypothesis. Firstly, having an aim or end in mind does not of itself amount to hypothesis. It just confirms the, the goal was a commercial one dollars per month. This decision highlights that the legislative test requires claimed activities to be conducted in a scientific way and that a valid hypothesis, which must have a scientific basis, is an important starting point in determining whether the claimed activities are experimental activities satisfying each criteria of the, legis of the legislative test for eligibility. Thirdly, Claimants must consider the importance and utility of evidence from a comp uh, competent professional in the field when deciding whether the outcome of the activities could have been known or determined in advance, or whether they could only be determined through the application of a systematic progression of work based on principles of established science. That concludes this presentation on the recent AAT case of Lake Soil ML and ISA. Should you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with our office. There is also additional material on recent cases and R&D legislation and guidance available on our website, as well as at the following websites. Thank you.